Imagine Lewis Hamilton, seven-time Formula One world champion at Silverstone Raceway, hurtling down the hangar straight toward turn 15 at 200 miles per hour. The engineer radios in. You gotta take it easy in this turn, your brakes are going to overheat. The engineer can't physically see Lewis or his car, and Lewis hasn't said anything to indicate that there is an issue. How can an engineer sitting a mile away in the paddock predict and provide information in real time. It's possible because the engineers have a high fidelity connected real-time digital twin of Lewis's car that enables them to make these kinds of early assessments. The Digital Twin Consortium defines a digital twin as a virtual representation of real-world entities and processes synchronized at a specified frequency and fidelity. Put another way, a digital twin is a model of your system in a computer that you connect in real time with data fed from sensors in and around your physical system, which we'll call the physical twin. Formula One teams have been developing and applying the principles of twinning for more than 30 years. Digital twins enable engineers to digitally assess what's happened to their cars in the past, what's happening to their cars at this current moment, and use that information to predict and adapt to what will happen in the future, often without bringing cars back into the paddock. Armed with this information, Formula One teams make hundreds of changes to a car in a single race and thousands of changes to a car over the course of a season. Accelerating innovation, Digital twins enable racing teams to remain competitive in one of the fastest sports on the planet. Digital twins aren't just used in Formula One. They're employed across a variety of industries. NASA pioneered the use of the twin in the 1960s during the Apollo moon missions, building a full-size replica of the Apollo capsule. NASA's pioneering work in twins continues today and is exemplified in the twins of the Perseverance rover on Mars and its Earth-bound sibling, Optimism. Here at Eglin Air Force Base, we're building a modern type of twin for the Air Force, a digital twin of Air Force weapons and assets. Today's digital twins talk to their physical counterparts. A bi-directional conversation exchanging sensor data, predictions, and updates. We leverage this dialogue to continuously and iteratively update our weapon systems. It's a constantly improving feedback loop that we can apply throughout the life of a weapon. What does the life cycle of a new weapon system look like from the perspective of the digital twin? Which comes first, the digital or the physical twin. With modern design and engineering workflows and tools, a new weapon system begins life in the digital realm. Starting from requirements and concepts, a weapon's shape and structure, all its internal components, their interfaces and functions, are each modeled, simulated, and analyzed in engineering discipline-specific tools. Aerodynamics, mechanical, electrical, and software characteristics are all built first in the virtual digital world. This collection of models and simulations represent a virtual prototype of our system, and it can describe the system with enough detail to continue through the next phases of the life cycle, development, and test. Adding hardware in the loop, we build physical prototypes of our system to further prove out and mature the concept until it's ready for production. Finally, when the physical weapon system is manufactured, connected, and operational, the digital twin really comes alive. Twin means two. And we don't have a twin of anything until we have both the digital and the physical coexisting. Digital twins connect the real world and the virtual world across time, space, and domains. Twins have been around and used for decades. 
Why is now the time for the Air Force to invest and develop digital twin technologies applied to weapon systems? There are three driving factors. First, technology convergence. Second, data as an asset. And third, the need to adapt in the face of peer threat evolution. Let's consider each of these three factors in the context of the twin. First, technology is an enabling factor. Technologies from the digital and the physical realm have been advancing dramatically in recent years, and the convergence of these areas has really opened up where digital twins can be useful. Three key areas of technology advancement needed to happen to make twins truly useful to the Air Force. First, the advent of small, powerful sensors. Second, a secure means to transmit that sensor data. And third, the ability to rapidly analyze that data to inform quick decisions. Thanks to a panoply of developments across a variety of fields, including autonomous cars, cell phones, mobile electronics, the maker movement, an explosion of software development, and incredibly talented scientists and engineers, we have all the ingredients to build our digital twins. Data is the second driving factor. The power of the twin comes from turning data into information. A tremendous amount of data is generated for our weapon systems throughout their life cycle. This data is stored on servers and workstations housed in the secure areas of buildings, largely inaccessible and often effectively lost. Accessing and analyzing this data across a patchwork of formats and proprietary models can be time consuming. Looking for this data is tricky. Finding this data is hard. And truly understanding the complex interactions and the cause and effect between systems is nigh impossible. Digital twins change the paradigm. Digital twins empower us to make intelligent sense of complex physical systems by making data available, connected, and organized, accessible through secure cloud-enabled environments and underpinned by standards and authoritative sources of truth. Peer adversary systems are sophisticated and evolving. The third forcing function is peer threat evolution. As Air Force Chief of Staff General Brown highlighted in his strategic approach titled Accelerate, Change, or Lose, the fight is changing and we need to position ourselves to adapt. Logistics and supply chains will be challenged. Every gallon of gas will matter. Every bullet, every bomb, every missile will matter. Every tactical strike that we cannot plan and assess with the utmost accuracy and optimization will by its very nature threaten the entire mission chain, prolonging the conflict, requiring more supplies, and put more people at risk more often. To adapt and pivot for the future fight, we need to shift from telling our warfighter, you got what you got, and design and develop the capability to rapidly evolve what you got into what you need. Digital twins enable us to do just this, leveraging technology as the whetstone to sharpen the tip of the spear. In Formula One, no two races are the same. In combat, no two missions are the same. What does the future hold for digital twins in our mission to provide our airmen with a competitive edge against a peer adversary? Operationally, we can continuously improve and update our weapon systems through software updates, just like you get on your phone, or rapidly adapt and update hardware for a specific mission. Digital twins enable us to track how an asset has been stored and used, what temperature extremes, shocks, vibrations, and g-forces has it experienced? Condition-based monitoring, coupled with predictive maintenance algorithms, allow Air Force maintenance crews to fix things before they break. The next-gen twins that we're building in the lab will be architected to speed decision support, 
for mission planning, execution, and tactics optimization. We are exploiting the fusion of emerging technologies like Internet of Things, 5G, extended reality, and artificial intelligence. To gain deeper insights into how our weapon systems work together and to rapidly evaluate the effectiveness of new configurations and design variations. We are exploring advanced communications and collaborative behaviors to maximize the convergence of effects from a mix of weapons. Weapons and their digital twins will be integrated into the sensor web to provide valuable information about the theater of operations. Formula One teams leverage the value of large amounts of well-organized, connected, accessible data, available for use by anyone on the team. Data from digital twins gives engineers the power to virtually iterate and prototype through design concepts in a time and cost efficient manner to yield optimal solutions in a quick decision, high intensity environment. The Air Force is just scratching the surface of what twins will allow us to achieve. Digital twins are the future for getting the most out of emerging technologies. They are a linchpin in the transformation to a digital, agile, open Air Force. They enable the adaptability we need to respond to unimagined threats. Digital twins are an exponential force multiplier that put our warfighter in pole position and give them the winning edge.